Hello and welcome back to Northwest Craftsman. If you're new to the channel, welcome here. Thank you for joining us. If you are a subscriber, thank you as well for joining. I appreciate it. Today we're going to be doing another one of those videos around the shop as I'm putting up the shop so that you can uh, see some of the different little processes that are in place that took me a lot of research to figure out how to do and how to do it well so that hopefully I can shorten your guys' time on doing some of these things. Today we're going to be talking about mounting large shop doors, not these sliding doors, but large swinging shop doors that should look something like this when you're done should with one finger go all the way through. And boy, I was super excited with how well that turned out. But we're gonna be going through, it's a little bit different than mounting a door, uh, like a man door inside of a regular framed wall. Um, talk through the tolerances, talk through cutting everything, talk through the design of what I actually did on the backside over here. Like how did I get all of these different pieces in and uh, what design did I use there? And we'll uh, start digging into that. All right, here we go. So the first step that you want to do is get the dimensions of your door frame itself and see how square it was. Ideally, it's going to be square to start with, but you want to measure from the floor to the top of your jam or uh, up to your header up here and then come all the way over to this side and get from your header down to your ground. Make sure that those two heights are the same or nearly the same and note how different they are. And then you also want to get your total header length up here and then what your footer would have been down here all the way across. Take note of any differences between those two because that is going to play into uh, the two measurements, this guy and this guy to this guy and this guy, because that's going to play into what kind of tolerances you throw in your door. Next up, what you want to do is try and choose uh, what tolerances do you want to have on either side of your frame. In my case, the height of both sides of my door frame were exactly the same within like a 32nd of an inch. Uh, which for my tolerance is what I'm cutting is nothing to worry about. And then uh, the width difference on my header versus my footer was about a quarter of an inch. Uh, for me, I chose to put, because this is going to be my final door that I'm installing, I'm not installing a door jam around it, I'm putting a quarter inch on all sides. And so I'm putting, well, on all sides. So when I'm going across the width of my door, I'm putting a quarter inch near the wall where I'll put the hinge, a quarter inch in the center. Then the other side of it gets a quarter inch there, so there should be a half inch total in the middle and then a quarter inch on the far wall. And I think that's gonna give me enough room to kind of move things around when I actually get the doors hung, but also not have things so loose that the doors are uh, coming apart. So on the bottom, the way that I chose to do that because I wanted to make sure that I was off the ground and that was one of the things that I had to take into consideration here. I'll actually show you real fast. So you wanna to look to see, take a measuring tape and look how far away from your uh, hinge point are you gonna be and where does that go out to on the concrete? And you wanna get real low down to the concrete and figure out if you're gonna be hitting any bumps out here. And the right way to do it is to take a string level, get a partner, get a string level, and go uh, like a half inch to an inch off the ground up here, string it out, make sure that it's level and check to see if there's any high spots or realistically it's right where the end of your door is gonna hit and make sure that your slab doesn't come up in that location because that's gonna dictate how far off the ground you wanna go with your door. So in my particular case, I ended up going one inch off the ground because uh, I wanted to ensure that I had no issues with hitting anything on the uh, concrete and what I'm planning on doing is putting one of the uh, bristle door sweeps on the bottom so it's got, um, uh, just like broom bristle brushes on the bottom of it so that it should take up any tolerances that are on the bottom. Okay, so let's get to the actual construction of the door. Once you've got your plan laid out for where you want it, I just found it pretty difficult to find online uh, what the tolerances ought to be on a finished door rather than a door jam, which the recommendation for most door jams is two inches wider than your door, which is pretty wide if you're trying to install the final door. So I went with a quarter inch on every single side, figure out what you need on the bottom, and then a quarter inch on the top. So to give you a quick overview of what the construction is going to look like, you get the basic four-sided frame. Let me stand back a little bit. You get the basic four-sided frame that comes all the way across. Corners are going to be half lap joints, and then you get one cross brace that comes from the uh, upper inside of the door. So this is the side that's going to hinge down to the lower right side of the door, making sure to attach it to the outsides of the frame. This is what's going to help keep it from sagging over time because this is strong. The uh, frame around the outside is strong, but not nearly as strong without this. And then once we mount the OSB to the front of it, uh, it's going to be even stronger because it'll keep it more rigid so that it doesn't rotate around. So here's a sample of the half lap joint. Essentially what you're doing is you're cutting the uh, board in half where it's going to mount. And when you get two of them together, you can slide both of them together and they sit nice and flush like this all the way across. And then the way we're gonna secure that in the middle, throw some wood glue in, 
so throw some wood glue in there and then you're gonna go through and put some screws through this to keep it nice and secure and that way you can work with it immediately. So there's two major steps to cutting out your half lap joints right here. One is measuring it and the next one is cutting it. Uh, measuring it is pretty self-explanatory. You wanna go one board width in. Um, you can either use a board for that or use your machina square to get yourself into that point. Um, I was usually within about uh, an eighth of an inch or so when I was doing that. It doesn't need to be like furniture kind of precise when you're doing it. Uh, then you want to go to the depth over here and get halfway through the board, which for the two by fours is, is at three quarters of an inch. So get those guys marked up. And then when you're trying to do the hogging out of this material, the quickest way to do it is to have a table saw with a dado stack on it. The next quickest way is to do a table saw without a dado stack and then just to cut slices. And then because I don't have a table saw, I'm using a circular saw for that. And so you want to end up setting your depth in a similar way to a table saw where you're gonna mark on the side of it where that three quarters of an inch or, yeah, where that three quarters of an inch is and then just make sure that you adjust your blade depth to that place. So once you have everything marked out, you're gonna go ahead and start from this side right here, cut right along your line and then you're gonna start from this side and keep working your way all the way up until you get there. Use a hammer, knock all the different chips out and then take a chisel to smooth the surface off. The surface does not need to be perfect but it's intended to take the extra roughness off of there so that you've got a nicer bonding surface for your glue. Here's an example of what that looks like. And that's it for the half lap. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish all of the rest of these guys off. And then when we get to the next step, I'll show you what to do. Poof. And just like that, all the half laps are done. Now, one of the things that I forgot to mention is that the length of these is going to be exactly the dimensions that you measured in the door minus whatever tolerance you're doing. So for me, I have 90 inches tall by 66 inches wide for each door. So I cut each one of these boards to 90 inches long and 66 inches long because the half lap joint doesn't actually lose any of your length on there. It just overlaps exactly. So it's gonna go end to end. Once you get those half laps cut, you wanna bring them over and lay them out on the floor so that you can check for squareness and fit. So once you have all your pieces laid out, you wanna get it mostly square before you start fastening things into place. And a really quick way to do that is to measure from opposite corners. So that corner to this corner and this corner to this corner. Make sure they're exactly the same length and then you will have a square frame. Once everything is squared up one corner at a time, I'm gonna go ahead and gently remove this to make sure it doesn't get bumped on anything. Go ahead and throw a bead of glue down here in the joint. I'm not gonna spread it around because it's gonna get decently well spread, but I'm gonna put plenty in there to make sure that it spreads everywhere that it needs to. Go ahead and set this guy back into place and then do that on every corner. Now that you got glue in all of your joints, you want to make sure that it is square again before you throw any fasteners in. Next up, you want to choose which side is going to be the inside of your door and which one's going to be the outside, as in which is going to be hinge side and which one's going to be handle side. In this case, I want this side to be the hinge and this side to be the handle, which means that I need to measure my cross member from this corner to that corner right there. Once you have it underneath, go ahead and mark it in both spots. You're gonna cut it with a circular saw and then flush fit it in.
Once your cross member is setting in place, we're gonna go ahead and drill some pocket holes in this side and this side so that we can connect it firmly into the rest of the frame. Uh, one of the things that's really helpful is if you take some of these two by four spacers to have it all the way around so that it's sitting up and off the ground and it gives it a flush surface for everything to sit on. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and put both of the door frames in the door and make sure that they fit the way I expect before I get OSB mounted to them and it's too late to undo a lot of the work. So this shows, I've just got them clamped up in the top on both of these sides over here. You can see the large gap across the top, which will eventually be on the bottom because of the bristle uh, uh, door sweep that I have on there. And then uh, I've got them line to line with the wall and there's something like a half to one inch gap right here in the middle closing down to about a quarter to half inch gap on the bottom. When we hang the doors we can go ahead and make sure that this is consistent all the way up and through there and then suck up any of the gap over by the hinge so that the part that we're using and seeing the most is nice and even all the way through and so that when we're on the door it opens up smoothly and it doesn't bias in one direction or the other. So I'm going to go ahead and take these guys down and mount the OSB to them and then we'll get ready to hang them. Hey guys, so I ran out of daylight last night. After you get your OSB mounted to your uh, door frame right in here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lean it up and you're gonna position it in the right place so that it is sitting supported in the correct place so that when you mount your hinges, it is not supporting any weight. The way you're gonna do that is get some scrap pieces of wood that sit down at the bottom at the height you want and you may need some door shims to, uh, or shims in general to kind of shim up the different locations to the right height if you don't have stock that is exactly the height you wanna go to. So once you have your door mostly in place, you wanna go ahead and check the gap all the way around to make sure it's sitting where you want. And then also, if you already have one door mounted uh, and you wanna do this roughly at first, you wanna close it and check for the gap between the two doors uh, to make sure that it's even all the way up and down. Now, the very last step that you're gonna do uh, when you have this door in what you believe is the right place is go ahead and take a level. You're gonna stick it up to the side here and make sure that the door is actually vertical. And in this particular case, we are dead vertical. So now what's interesting about that is we are dead vertical over here, but if you look at this wall right here, there's a pretty decent gap that runs all the way up and around until you get to the bottom where it's dead even. That is because the wall on the left is not actually vertical. The uh, tolerance on this guy was pretty close. The bubble was just barely on one side of level, but over the entire length, that makes a pretty big difference. So that's totally fine. That's why we have shims and that's why we've got hinges so that we can uh, mount it in the right place. Make sure that this guy swings and then we can worry about sealing this from dust and everything else later. Once everything's lined up there, you're gonna go ahead and take your hinges. I chose, ooh, get that again, focus, maybe, maybe. Um, I chose these guys because they've got a 60 pound capacity per piece and I've got three of them for the door. I didn't know exactly what I was gonna need for the door until I got it built and it turns out I was only originally planning on putting two, uh, one at the top and one at the bottom, but after lifting these doors, it's closer to 200 pounds and so I wanted to get uh, three of the 60 pound hinges 
Just make sure that your hinges can handle the weight of the door so they don't tear out and make sure to use fasteners that can go deep enough into the structure behind to support it. A lot of times they'll come with these little chintzy fa fasteners that you don't want to use. All right, so let's go ahead and get the uh, hinges mounted. I find it's easiest to mount my hinges if I do the wall side first, and what I do is I measure in from the vertical. So in this case, my door is the vertical component. So I measure in from the door to a consistent location to make sure that my hinge is not tilted in one direction or the other. Leave these guys unmounted for now because we're gonna wait till all of the hinges come together and then we're gonna mount them in one. So a quick close up of what installing the hinge looks like. After you mark the top and bottom of where your hinge are supposed to sit, I measure out from the wall to the place where I want the edge of it to sit. Now I use the hinge itself to mark, once I've got my bottom and my top, to draw a line all the way between there so that when I'm fastening the first one in here, I keep it on that line. Now one of the things you want to watch is to make sure that your fastener sticks right in the middle of one of these holes because, because of the bugle head on here, when it fastens down and in, you might actually find that it pulls your hinge one direction or the other. And you wanna try and make sure that it is as close to that line as possible because a crooked hinge is gonna lead to a door that doesn't swing freely. Once you have your first one in here, I don't tighten it down, but then I move to the next one, bring it all the way around, and then fasten this bottom one in. Once I've got these two fastened in, go ahead and fasten the last two and you should be good to go. Once I got to this step, I made a quick addition to the door because the last thing that I'm going to be doing is fastening the actual door side fasteners in. And uh, one of the concerns that I had is the fasteners that they gave me were too small, so I wanted to use my two and a half inch fasteners. But the problem I ran into is that if I go through the uh, OSB, it's going to pop through. Oh, get that in focus. It's going to pop through the other side, and I didn't want that. So I went ahead and uh, on this other door, I cut an extra 90 inch length. Cut an extra 90 inch length of two x four right here, fastened it in from the backside, um, and then that gives me plenty of space for the two and a half inchers to drive through. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that real quick for this door right here, mount it up, and then get those hinges on. Okie dokie guys, and now for the moment of truth. Remove your shims. Or kick your door off the stand. There's one. I'll come over here. Okay. Haha, -ha. and remove your clamp. And there we go. Beautifully hung door, all supported, plenty of space on the bottom, and closes like a charm without biasing in one direction or the other. See how they look when they come together. Sweet. All right, there we go, you guys. So the very last thing that I added in was this stop right here. I just took a, a two by four, ripped it in half about the length that splits both the doors. And what that does is it prevents, uh, let me show you, it prevents the doors from closing too far. 
So it'll stop it right where they're supposed to be, specifically because you've got a lot of leverage and it would be super easy to uh, rip out these hinges over here if you were to continue pushing it through all the way. Well guys, that's how you mount the door. It's really that easy. There's not really a whole lot to it and you don't need all that many tools to get to it. Um, some of them made it a little bit easier, that pocket jig tool. First time I've used it, really, really nice. Highly recommend getting one of those guys. You can find a link to it down in the description below. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for joining. I hope you learned something. I know that I learned plenty going through this process. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. And if you like this kind of content, we'd love it if you could give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more of the content. And on our channel are all of the other videos with these little knickknack things on uh, how to put your shop together, whether it's putting an outlet in or using a uh, powder nailer, etc., etc. All of those are on the channel. All right, we'll see you guys later. Have a great one. Bye.